JavaScript's Mutation Observer interface is the ace up my sleeve that I pull out whenever I need to run some code on changes in the document object model tree. I don't use it all the time, but this can really give you mastery over components that maybe you didn't write, like Webflow's slider element. As a quick note, this is definitely possible in Webflow with the slider change element trigger. Uh, pretty simple actually, but for this example, I just wanna show you how we can use Mutation Observer to observe what's going on with the slider element. So let's go back to the slider element one, and I wanna show you real quick, on testimonials, I have the slides here within the mask, and on each slide I have an inner wrapper called testimonial4 underscore slide inner, and this has a combo class of is current. The ones that aren't current don't have that combo class, so we'll be adding that class to change this opacity to 100%, and the default styling has the opacity at 50%. Back to the live demo, you can see this thing is auto-playing, and I have this aria hidden attribute of true, which means we can't see it. And if we come back here, you'll see that the, the aria hidden attribute of true is removed. So that's something that we can watch for using Mutation Observer. Let's hop into the code and see how it works. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna declare a variable called target node. Using query selector, we're gonna grab the mask element. It's important that we get the mask and not the slide because we wanna get the parent of all the objects. This query selector only takes one argument and the target node has to be one element as well. Like you might think you wanna use query selector all, but in this case, you wanna use query selector. And I'll show you how we get the child elements later. But just note that this testimonial four mask is the parent to each individual slide. Continuing on, we declare a config variable and this is just a JavaScript objects that we're gonna configure how we want our mutation observer to function. At the end of the video, I'll get into some of the different options that you can pass to your config. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna define an observer variable and we're gonna use the new keyword to create a mutation observer instance. This instance takes a callback function that we'll define in just a minute. Now we wanna start observing the target node for configured mutations. We'll take the target node and within that we'll get the child nodes and run a for each loop. The for each loop will give us access to each child, which in this case is the slide. And then we're gonna call the observer observe function on that for each child. And we're gonna pass the config options into that too. Now let's define our callback function. So callback is a function we're gonna store as a variable in this case. And it, the function will take a mutation list and observers. We're not gonna use the observer, but I'll show you the mutation list here in just a second. So the mutation list gives us all the mutations that have that aria hidden that we specified here based on our filter. And it's we're gonna loop through that and look at each mutation that exists. So let's log that to the console and see what we get. If we look at our mutation record, we can see that one of the properties we have is target, which in this case is the slide. And if we open that up and we look at the aria hidden, we can see that it's true in this case, which means it's not the active slide at that moment. So this is what we're gonna check for. Back in our code, we can make an if else block that looks at that mutation.target.aria hidden property. And if it is hidden, then we're going to remove the class is current from it. So we're taking mutation.target.first child, and that first child is getting us this element here, the testimonial four underscore slide inner, because we want the first child of the slide. And that's what we're toggling this class on. In the other case, when aria hidden is false, we're going to add is current to the slide and save and refresh. And we can see we have a working prototype. The last thing to notice is that we're getting this violation added non-passive event listener near scroll blocking touch start event. This is a problem with jQuery. And the fix to that is just to add this line of these couple lines of code. I'm not gonna go through what this is doing, but I provided the link here to Stack Overflow if you wanna know more. Anyways, that's just a quick getting started on Mutation Observer. I recommend reading the documentation here. You can disconnect the instance so that you're, you stop observing it and save some, uh, some CPU RAM. You have the observe function, which we went over, but I think this example is really good in that it shows in the config, you can pass a child list and a subtree. Subtree will look at all of the subnodes and um, return, like basically watch everything below that tree. So in this case, if I pass subtree true, it would look not, sorry, it's on the mask. It would look at the slide, the slide inner, text size large, this div here, and the divs, and basically every div inside it, which actually the Webflow slider element is composed of adding aria um, hidden to each of these um, elements within the subtree. So if you console log that, you'll get a ton of, um, of logs there. The other thing is this child list true. This will check to see if you're actually adding or removing elements in the document object model. Um, but in this case, we're not adding or removing anything, we're just making changes. 
And that's really it. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Uh, I will link the code in the description below and let me know if you want to see anything else. Yeah. Bye.